It's Friday night, Atlanta. Time to rise up tonight with Kelly Price and Harry Douglas. Presented by AT&T. The curse is broken and we have the Atlanta Braves to thank for that. I'm Kelly Price joined in studio with Harry Douglas, the former Falcons wide receiver. Harry, welcome to this desk. It feels like the first day of school and you got to sit right next to your favorite friend in class. Yes, it does, Kelly. And I'm so glad that our Atlanta Falcons could get a victory. And all I heard when I turned the game on, right, was who that? Who that? Who that? Well, I got a little message for the people down in New Orleans, all the state of Louisiana. Who that? Who that say they're going to beat them Falcons? Now go run tell that. You heard the man. Well, I got to be honest. It did kind of seem like it was going sideways as we saw the Falcons with their late three score lead dissolving in those final minutes in New Orleans. And that's where Matty Ice came in with his 41st career game winning drive. Seventh place on the NFL's all time list. Cordell Patterson even joked after the game. We've got to stop giving our fans a heart attack and maybe they will because we love to see this team crush that Atlanta sports collapsing narrative. Area. And I think it started with the Atlanta Braves. Shout out to the Braves because last year they was up 3-1 versus the Dodgers. They collapsed. Right this year they were three up, up three one against the Dodgers. They won in six. This year they was up three one in the World Series. They won in six. And then the Falcons came, gave up a little lead, gave up their lead to the Saints, but they won the game. And that's the most so now thing. we're moving forward, Ke Kelly. We're moving forward now. No more collapses. <laughs> and most importantly, I think after starting zero and two and then one and three on the season, the Falcons have won three of their last four games. They're now at five hundred. How do they build on that momentum, continuing to kind of build confidence as they head to Dallas? We know the Cowboys are favored, but they did just drop a surprising one last week to Denver after not losing since week one in Tampa. And I'll say you got to focus on the basics. Get back to the, 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 the main things when it comes to football, right? The fundamentals of the game. And then I, I played with a guy named Todd McClure, a.k.a. we call him Mud Duck. And he used to have this saying, there's no momentum like momentum, baby. Take this momentum, head on down to Dallas. They're wounded right now. When they're wounded, don't let them breathe. Stomp on their necks. Choke them out a little bit, Kelly. <laughs> and we love a good mud duck quote here on Rise Up tonight. Meanwhile, someone we really haven't talked a whole lot about on this show is AJ Terrell, who's maybe one of the most under the radar players on this roster right now. He had one of his best games as a pro on Sunday with three big passes defended, allowing just two completions for 19 yards being targeted five times. And according to Pro Football Focus, Terrell has given up the fewest yards of any corner starting in the NFL with 74. On top of that, Harry, he hasn't had a flag thrown against him in three games. Is a star being born in front of us? Ooh, Kelly, a star is in the making with A.J. Terrell, and he happens to be right here from Atlanta, went to Westlake High School. And I'll say this, I remember when he was drafted in the first round, some fans were a little iffy about the pick. Not me. I knew what we had. I knew the big time football that he played at Clemson. He has transferred that over. I say he's copied and pasted over to the National Football League. So shout out to AJ Terrell for being one of the most underrated people. And I need the national media to show him some appreciation because he's balling this year. So the guys certainly stepped up a notch for the New Orleans trip. And the first time this season, we've actually had kind of a hard time narrowing down the best pregame Falcons fits. First up, Mike Davis with the AT Aliens jersey. Outcast bringing these back to celebrate the 25th anniversary of their iconic album. Of course, we're parting like it's 1995 with the Braves and 1996 with the AT Aliens jersey. I know you love this throwback, Harry. Me and you, your mama and your cousin too. <laughs> There's nothing like being an AT Alien, being from here. Mike Davis is representing the city of Atlanta. He's from here, representing Outkast. Outkast representing the Braves. Outkast supporting the Atlanta Falcons. Mike Davis, shout out to you, man, for keeping it here right at home. We love to see it. And as Outkast once said, what's cooler than being cool? Ice cold, which is exactly the theme Grady Jarrett was going for here with this white out suit fit. I like this, and I'll tell you why. He felt godly on Sunday, which was very, very well needed, Kelly. Why? Because he was down there in New Orleans with all those witchcraft people, <laughs> all that demonic, them demonic spirits. So Grady, keep shining. Rock the all white when you're feeling godly. <laughs> and we got to win. Grady wasn't the only guy on the defensive front to show out. Steven Means scooping and almost scoring on Sunday, but he gets all the points in my book for this look with the red blazer, the red and black color tones, and even just keeping it simple with some jeans and a black tee with sneakers to match, Harry. Hey, Big Boy has some style, and he got him a fumble and picked it up, and he was stumbling and bumbling and rumbling before he was caught inside the 10-yard line. Steven Means, nice outfit. I wish you could have gotten the end zone, but it's okay. The offense took care of the rest. Finally, another week of sharp dressing from the vet, Deron Harmon. The suit could not be sharper, and to top it all off, he hits us with the turtleneck. GQ, get a hold of this man. He is cover ready. 
you always know when you're dealing with a pro's pro. And you can tell he came from New England. Now, I'm not saying we love New England, but you can tell he came up there from a, a team that's business-like. He has his turtleneck, got his nice suit. And Kelly, I know you really go like this one. <laughs> that milk dud is shining for a second time this year. You always get me with that one. So we saw some pretty hype post-game celebration this week in the Falcons locker room after that win in New Orleans. It got us thinking, who's the worst dancer in that locker room? Let's find out what the guys have to say in this week's Question of the Week. The worst answer on the team, I gotta put myself towards the top of that list. I can't foresee Caleb being very good at dancing, you know, unless it's like a cowboy shuffle kind of deal. Uh, but myself was definitely towards the top of that list. I'm not a great dancer, but I'm, I make fun of Josh all the time because he just looked like a dad. <laughs> but yeah, that's my guy, but I just see that. That's a tough one because a lot of guys can't dance. I, I just got to get to Mike Davis because that's my guy. I don't know if he can dance or not, but I just feel like he cannot dance. I think uh, Mike Davis, I've heard a little word around the streets. You know, he, has a, don't have, he doesn't have much rhythm, so I'm going to say Mike. Man, they're coming from Mike Davis' life in that running back room. I don't know what's going on there. Harry, we all know here on Rise Up Tonight that you've got the tunes, you've got the moves to match, but I know you've also got a good story about a surprising player you played with who was a good dancer. Yes, he was. We had a backup center by the name of Brett Romberg. He played down in University of Miami when they were the U, the real U. So you know he had to have some rhythm, some soul. So every Friday, we used to get in a circle, and I used to hit that beat. And I say, Romberg, drop that thing. Romberg used to, <laughs> used to pop it and drop it. Like it was hot, everything. Ron Burr used to hit it. That's my boy right there. I love Ron Burr. Got to pop in and drop in here on Rise Up tonight. <laughs> Still ahead here on the show, we catch up with a guy who has worn both Atlanta Braves and Atlanta Falcons jerseys. Brian Jordan joins us later on. Plus, more AJ Terrell and how he can go to work in Dallas this Sunday. My film room is next on Rise Up tonight. We got you covered with more Falcons news and nuggets, including a trip over to Harry's film room. Rise Up tonight will be right back. What's up, ATL? This is Head Crack. Let's rejoin my favorite co host Kelly and Harry, for more Rise Up Tonight on your home for Falcons football. Fox 5 Atlanta. Welcome back to Rise Up Tonight for this week's edition of Harry's Film Room. After having a very productive rookie season, this player has stepped it up even more this year and has become one of the NFL's top corners. He doesn't get many targets because he's usually duct taping opponents. Let's take a look at a play last week versus the Saints so we can see firsthand why quarterbacks are scared of him. Right here, you're going to see cornerback A.J. Terrell, one-on-one -on -one with the Saints wide receiver. Now, the Saints right here, they're going to run a boot action. And as we let this uh, video play, I want y'all to, to, to see some techniques. We're going to stop it right here. Now, in press coverage, you can do a couple different things. You can be aggressive or you can open the gate and mirror the wide receiver. That's what he did right here. But I love this arm bar that he gave the wide receiver to let him know, hey, I'm going to be over top. And you see his position. This receiver right now cannot be A.J. Terrell deep. Now, as we let the video finish playing, we see A.J. Terrell. He's going to stop on the dime. But this is what I love even more. Ooh, right here. Right there. It was a little bit of separation by the receiver and defensive back. But A.J. Terrell got up out of his break, came downhill, and beat the receiver to the football. Now, this is why he's one of the best corners in the NFL, and I need people on the national stage to give him his props. Kelly, back to you. Put some respect on his name. Thanks, Harry. Well, Dallas comes into this matchup as one of the best offenses in the NFL. Falcons insider Dave Archer breaks down how Atlanta can get the win in his keys to the game. Falcons get a big win in New Orleans. Now they're back on the road against the Cowboys in Dallas in Jerry World. Let's look at some keys to the game. This is an Atlanta team that's playing solidly on the offensive side of the football. They've made some big plays. They're going to need to do some more of that in this game. You're going to have to score points against this Dallas team because this Dallas team is very good on the offensive side of the ball. This is a defense that feeds on takeaways. They have 14 on the year. In fact, 11 interceptions. Take care of the football in this game, which is paramount in every game. But Dallas really feeds on those short field opportunities to give their offense a chance to put points on the board. Make sure you take care of the football. Don't give them any easy breaks. On the other side of the football, defensively, this is going to be a tall task. It's the number one offense in the league. They lead the league in yards. They're third in the league on uh, in scoring points. They're third in the league in third down offense. So what do you have to do? You've got to find a way to win that third down. That's what Denver did last weekend. They held Dallas to just 5 of 13 on third down, limited their possessions. In fact, Dallas only had the ball for 18 minutes of the game. 
That's what you've got to do. Keep this Dallas offense off of the field. And you come home a winner again. The Road Warriors going on the road to Dallas. Good stuff there. Thanks, Arch. Still to come on Rise Up tonight, how the Falcons are giving back this Veterans Day. More on that coming up later on in the show. Hey, coming up next, we go in the nest with BJ, also known as Brian Jordan. That's next on Rise Up tonight. Rise Up Tonight is presented by AT&T and brought to you by Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. By Home Depot, how doers get more done. By Mercedes-Benz, the best of nothing. And by Truist, committed to a better future. Welcome back to Rise Up Tonight, and it's time to hop into the nest with Kelly, Harry, and tonight's influencer, brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Well, in the nest with us this week, we've got an appropriate guest who's worn both a Braves and a Falcons jersey, Brian Jordan. I mean, can you even believe that the Braves really did it? You know, I, I really can't. And, you know, halfway through the season, I think everybody counted us out. Cunha, we lose one of the best players in the game. But got to give a lot of credit to Alex Anthopoulos for making those moves just before the trade deadline. And it really transformed this ball club. And, you know, the clubhouse was just unbelievable. And what a run. I mean, you look at losing Hank Aaron in the offseason and the Braves come back. How ironic is it that they win a world championship? What has it been like for you to now watch this team in kind of an analyst role? You know, it's been interesting because, uh, you know, when I retired from the, from the game in 2006, I never thought I'd be an analyst for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and But, you know, 15 years later, here I am. Uh, I enjoy it. It keeps me around the game. And, you know, it's been fun these last four years when Alex Anthopoulos, well, three years since Alex Anthopoulos has, has been there at the, at the helm. He's done a fantastic job. And each year, you know, with the talent that we have, you feel like you got a chance every year. And thanks to the great work of the organization putting that in place. You know, we may see another 14-year run, who knows, uh, of winning the, the, the division. So, you know, it's fun to watch. It's fun to see these young players develop. And right now they're doing a great job of keeping them together. So what is it about the city of Atlanta, right, that you love so much? Because, see, you played three years here from, the, from an NFL standpoint, five seasons here from an MLB standpoint and you reside here in Atlanta. So what is it about Atlanta that captured you? You know, it, it, I, I love the city. I love the diversity. I, I love the opportunity. Uh, you know, we have so many great companies here in Atlanta. Uh, you know, that's what kept, kept me here. You know, I, I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland. I thought I might go back to Baltimore, but, you know, being exposed to Atlanta and, and the times that, that I've been here, uh, it's been fun and something that, you know, I don't want to leave. Uh, my opportunity is here. I write children's books. So, you know, I'm in, embedded in the elementary school space. So I, I enjoy it and, and I love Atlanta. Think, oh. Thinking back to your playing days here for the Falcons, Brian, I know it was only a couple short seasons, but what are some memories that stick out about playing for this Falcons franchise? While being a part of the first uh, Deion Sanders experience, we came in together, and, and that was under Marion Campbell when the, the Falcons were not good at all. <laughs> <laughs> to really be a part of that team that turned it around in, in uh, the 90 and 91 season, uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was crazy <laughs> with Jerry Glanville, but uh, we loved him, and he was a player's coach, and he allowed us to, to be ourselves. And uh, if you remember, that was the MC Hammer days and Holy Fields <laughs> and country singers on the sideline. I mean, we just had fun, and we kind of made it our own, and, and the city of Atlanta really embraced us. And, and uh, that was the beginning of Atlanta Falcons coming back alive. Now, you played football first professionally, then you played baseball second. Um, is there a, a particular reason why you went football first and baseball second? Well, I, I think the instant gratification of football, you know, baseball is a process. You know, you yeah. go through the final leagues, you got to work your way to the big leagues. And uh, football, hey, you make the team, it's now, it's here now. And uh, I love that part about the football game and football, everybody asked me which one's my favorite. Football was my favorite. and. You know, to have three really good years uh, with the Falcons, uh, being an alternate in the Pro Bowl my third year, you know, I was starting to rise. I was starting to be noticed. And I wasn't ready to give up football at the time. But, 
you know, baseball is a lot safer, uh, you know, longevity <laughs> in baseball. So it was a tough choice for me to have to make. Uh, unfortunately, I had to make that choice and decided on baseball. Uh, I remember after three years of playing baseball, the Raiders called me to try to get me back on the football field. And that was that was tempting. But, you know, my body was feeling good in baseball and I knew how hard I was hitting on that football field. So eventually I would fall apart on that football field. Brian, thanks so much for the time, for sharing some, some memories of your Falcons days and Braves days as well. Anyone who wants to catch the full conversation, head to fox5atlanta.com and we'll be right back on Rise Up Tonight. Hey Atlanta, this is Ed Crack talking and you watching Rise Up Tonight presented by AT&T. Hey Crack here, Rise Up Tonight has been presented to you by AT&T. As part of the NFL Salute to Service Week to celebrate and honor military members this Veterans Day, the Falcons hosted their second annual Battle of the Bases, giving some active duty service members an opportunity to compete against one another in the shadow of Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Victor Prieto has that story as we rise up for Atlanta, brought to you by Truist. Oh, we're going to see them when we get back to Fort Benning. It ain't over with. The troops swapped their uniforms for flags this week. The Atlanta Falcons hosted their second annual Battle of the Bases, inviting military members from Fort Benning and Fort Gordon to compete in a flag football tournament with former Falcons legends coaching by their sides. You got to make sure you don't just to pay homage to our veterans because this is service week and we want to salute our service men and women that help protect us in this wonderful country. It's a lot of high energy, a really cool way for our military to come out here and show them that we appreciate them, but while they have fun too. So this is one of our fun events of the week, but on Honestly, every single day uh, during the uh, week of Salute to Service Week presented by Zaxby's is a different way for us to give back to the military. Definitely a good experience to actually come out here playing on like obviously behind a Mercedes-Benz State. Not a lot of people get to do that, you know, so it's definitely a good experience to come out here and like play, have fun. Though these servicemen are friends and brothers out on the base, out here on the field, these guys are cold-blooded competitors, all vying for that championship trophy and knowing a win means bragging rights back out. Keep going, the keep going, keep going! Yeah! I like that, baby! They, they started off and they weren't really talking to each other. I heard the team chants going on. I really felt like I was in the tunnel of a Sunday NFL matchup because guys were getting ready to go after it. Everybody is very competitive. Everybody bought the A game. Everybody bought the A game. I think everybody trying to get scouted by somebody, but there's no scouts out here. You know, so everybody doing good, you know. But I'm proud of everybody. I'm proud of all the troops for coming out, being very supportive, being very, very respectful to everybody, you know. Nobody trash talking. Everything is pretty good and fun. In the end, Tom and his team fell short of the title, with Team No Talent from Fort Benning claiming the championship prize. For Fox 5 Sports, I'm Victor Prieto. Cool story. Thanks, Victor. So, Harry, this Sunday there will be a familiar face to Falcons fans and to players in that coach's box, Dan Quinn. Do you think that guys like Matt Ryan, knowing the former head coach so well, will be able to take advantage of the defense he'll run out there with Dallas? Of course. He was used to seeing that defense week in and week out here every day in practice while Dan Quinn was here in Atlanta. So I'm looking for Matt Ryan to be able to have a good game. And not to mention, last year he carved this defense up. A lot of the same faces are over there still. And do you kind of have a little bit of extra juice when you go against a former coach like that? Yeah, of course you do. And Dan Quinn did some great things here, but I'd be the first to tell you, Dan Quinn, Harley Quinn, <laughs> Brady Quinn, Quinn Quinn, I don't care who it is, Falcons in four. Well, there's not a Quinn on the Cowboys offense, but is there another maybe out, uh, you know, matchup that you're looking for there? I am. I'm looking for the receivers of the Dallas Cowboys and then the secondary of the Atlanta Falcons, right? I'm looking for A.J. Terrell. Who's he going to guard? Is it going to be C.D. Lamb? Is it going to be Amari Cooper? Not to mention, in that room over there, in the tight end uh, room for Dallas, they have guys over there that can play the game of football as well. So the skill position players on the perimeter versus the secondary of the Falcons. That's what I'm looking forward to. And Atlanta's been really good on the road, so they'll hope to continue that trend in Jerry World. Thanks for staying up late with us here on Rise Up Tonight. For Harry Douglas, I'm Kelly Price, and we'll see you back here next Friday night.